Tim's American Beauty was made by Robust Tools, America's premier lathe manufacturer. Quality hardened tool rests and live centers too. Robust. Built to turn wood. Enjoyed for a lifetime. Thompson Lathe Tools. Welcome to a new level of professional wood turning tools. Made by a wood turner for wood turners. Well, today's project, we're going to turn, but we're also going to cut, sand, grind, drill, anything we can do to remove the wood from our jack-o'-lantern box. And it's a really cool project. It is a lidded box, pretty standard there, but we're going to do carving and we're going to cut the holes in there so you can put a light in there and make a really cool project for Halloween for your house. This is really neat. I am not a great carver, so the style I went for was a rough look and I actually burned the wood with the sanding disc as I was working just to give it that neat texture. Now I've had some billets of ash drying for the last couple of years. This is six inches across and square and probably about 17 inches long. So I'm just marking this in half right here. Now any wood would work for you. I would suggest that you have kiln dried wood for this project because you don't want to split. In this case, this is split on the ends a little bit, but I'm gonna use some Cyrano Acrylate glue to stop the cracks as I'm turning. And also the split ends is gonna be waste wood that I'm gonna hold in the jaws of the chuck. But I've got my bandsaw all set up right here, and I'm gonna turn it on. It's a cool feature on my bandsaw, I upgraded a little bit. This has 18 inch throat, so I can put big stuff through it now. But also it has a key that I can take out. So Dooley, our dog, he can't come in here and cut up bones at night without my knowing it. So anyway, so you can put the key in, you turn it on, you have power. I've got my little LED light that's attached to it, which is really nice. And then I have the bandsaw set up so this is gonna go just under there. I don't have any more blade exposed than I need. And we're gonna turn it on and just take it slowly, pull this out, hit start, and just feed it through. I'm just using light pressure. You know, it's my hands are to the side, so you can't get your hands in the blade. So keep your hands out to the side so you're safe. There we go. Now, one other thing, watch this. If I use my foot down here, I can push that pedal down. It turns the bandsaw off and it stops the blade quickly so it doesn't run and run and run and run. So that's a really good safety feature. Now I'm gonna set the table up a little bit differently here and we're gonna cut the corners off of the blanks of wood. Now I've drawn a circle with a compass on here and you can see I have these corners I wanna get off and I've tilted the table at a 45 degree angle and this is going to cut off the edges really nicely. So let me turn things back on again here. And we just feed it through slowly. Again, keep your hands to the side. You don't wanna be by the blade. You could do this freehand with a block standing up, but I wouldn't recommend it. Get that out of the way. All you do now, you rotate it to turn, and you turn, get the other corner knocked off. Just take your time and let the blade feed through the wood. One more corner, and we're gonna go to the lathe. You can see all these cracks here. That's from the air drying. So I'm just gonna take some cyanoacrylate. It's a, it's a super glue, basically, and drizzle it into these cracks. I'm not trying to fill them up, but what it does is this is so thin, it runs all the way down to the bottom of the crack. 
and it'll keep the wood from splitting further as I'm turning. This part is going to be waste wood and it's going to go away. One thing you want to make sure of when you do this, this is instant dry, it's so thin. You still want to give it a minute or two before you start turning because you don't want that all over you. Don't ask me how I know. But for a while, people there called me old one eyebrow. <clears throat> anyway, so on the other side of that, we have, oh, also squeeze it. You hear air come out, then you can put the lid back on and that way it doesn't glue itself shut. Um, we have on this side, we have the point from our compass, right? So we know we can center this piece. But see how perfectly cut on the edges that was over on the bandsaw? So I can actually take my compass again and kind of line it up with the edge here, line it up with the edge there, get pretty close, you know, make it look a little symmetrical. I'm not drawing a circle again, but I'm just trying to find the middle. So I kind of found the middle now and boom, now I have that point. That's going to help me put it on the lathe and center it and not waste a lot of wood. Now today's a fun day because when I got the uh, bandsaw, believe it or not, Rikon is now making a drive center. And this one's kind of unique. It's got a sleeve on it that moves back and forth and it exposes the tips of the drive center right there. Also, this piece right here, the center, has a spring on it also. So it, it's really a neat concept and I've used it a couple times and I've liked it so far. And for this project, it really works well because I'm not worried about messing up the end with a drive center like that. Also, it does seem to hold fairly well. So I'm going to bring this in on that point I made, or somewhere close to it at least. <laughs> Lock that in like so. And as I tighten this, you can see over here, that's pushing in on the teeth and getting a good grip. You don't pound that one in. You just do it by tightening the tailstock to make it work. So the first thing we want to do, obviously, is to rough this out. And I'm going to get my tool rest about midway. I'm going to rotate this by hand, make sure nothing is touching. And look how, uh, <laughs> look how centered that is. That looks pretty good, doesn't it? So anyway, I'm going to get my roughing gouge and we're going to start cleaning this up. So we have this rounded out nicely. We're gonna turn it back on. I'm gonna take a carbide tip scraper. It's on center. And this is in grain going this way. So we're gonna get a little bit of dust, but all I wanna do is flatten this edge so I can start making a tenon onto here. So we're just gonna take nibble the wood away. You don't wanna take a lot of wood at one time with a scraper or with a cutting tool because you will get that. You hear that vibration? That's I'm making contact with the entire side of the tool. Now it's handling it okay because I've got a big handle and it's massive, it's got a lot of weight to it, so it supports well. But the further out you get from the tool rest this way, you run into more vibration problems. But this tool is really heavy duty, so if I nibble at it carefully, I can flatten this out without any problems. And being able to retain it, I'm going to make a pull back to see if it's nice and flat and clean it up a bit. I don't know why I'm making it really pretty because it's going to go away. <laughs> this is going to be waste wood in the end. But now that is flat so I can start making my tenon. And we're going to be using our large jaws today to hold it. So this is the diameter I need to make my tenon that it's going to grab onto. So I've got a point that's sharp. This is the sharp one. This is the one I dulled on the, on the uh, grinder so it won't catch as much. It still catches every now and then, but that's my fault. Anyway, so I'm going to touch this tip which is sharp and look at the mark off to the right and you can see right there i'm just about on that i nailed that pretty good <laughs> i don't remember this day so anyway now i'm going to start making my tendon so we can go back to our scraper again and i want about a tendon that is about three eighths of an inch deep because i want a good hold on this because we're going to be doing some hollowing so we'll start removing the wood here you can actually see you're getting shavings off this and dust because when you go straight in on end grain, there's no fiber to hold the wood together, so that's why it gets dusty. And this will be a dusty project when we start doing our hollowing work. Anyway, I'm almost to that point. The vibration from me taking too big of a cut. There we go. And if anything, 
you don't want to make your tenon too narrow. Oops, because it won't hold. Also, don't stick the tool in the wood while you're talking to a camera. We can clean that up right there. It doesn't matter. That's waste wood anyway. So, I've got that. And again, the only tool I have that I've done any special grinds to is this one. And it's got the angle on it so I can bring it in here in a scraping method and make the dovetail that goes inside or matches the jaws on my truck. Also, I'm angling in a little bit, so when this wood touches the jaws of the chuck, it's touching on the outside, and I have the strongest hold possible. There we go. Now, remember all those split ends that's going to be in the waste wood? Well, some idiot put the tenon on the good end, and I don't know, that's me. <laughs> so, all these cracks here, we're going to turn them away anyway, because uh, the pumpkin sits in here about like so. And ideally, it was going to be up here. Now, it's going to be down here a little bit, because we still got room to work with. And we're gonna turn it like this, actually, because we got to waste some wood to part this off and I still want this to match up on the curve. That'll be fun. Anyway, so the first thing I wanna do, grab my Googles, and I want to grab my uh, roughing gap, my roughing gap, my bowl gouge. Start this up. You notice I've got it in jaws and I pulled the tail stock up just to give it a little bit more support because that's a lot of wood out there to be held with a tenon. But what I want to do is start making a curve, right? Well, the shortcut to making a curve is to make a line. So I'm going to come in here and just start taking a 45 degree cut and just start pumping away and getting rid of all that wood right there. I'll make a curve in a minute. I'm not worried about the shape yet. I just want to get rid of all the extra wood. Pick my speed up a little bit more. Everything's in round. Take it back just a tick. There we go. Speed helps when you're trying to cut. This is really dry wood like I was talking about. So this will heat up as you're doing this, so watch out. <laughs> as the farther I get out from the tool rest, you also notice the diameter decreases, right? Well, watch what happens to the handle of my bowl gouge as I get out. I have to raise it to keep the same angle and the same contact that I have when I start here, because I'm going down to a narrower surface and I'm having to lower the tip to keep it all in order. But that's part of turning. So anyway, I'm guessing that's as small a diameter I want to put right there and that's as far out over the tool rest as I want to get to because you get much more than that you can get into a lot of trouble. This is a big heavy gouge so it can take hanging over without getting vibration in it. But my stem is going to be in there somewhere. Probably about there. So now that we've got that, we start making our curve. Now you could use a spindle gouge to make this shape. I'm using a bowl gouge. All you want to do, make sure, is that you start from high to low to make your cut. Now one thing to consider is when we start to part this off, we're going to lose some space. So if you make a perfect curve right now, you're going to have a lid that's not going to fit right. So we're going to leave a bump here. We're not going to make a great circle. So I'm going to work on the end down here, and once we get it to that point, I'll show you how we part off the lid. Tim's American Beauty was made by Robust Tools, America's premier lathe manufacturer. Quality hardened tool rests and live centers too. Robust. Built to turn wood. Enjoyed for a lifetime. Thompson Lathe Tools. Welcome to a new level of professional wood turning tools. Made by a wood turner for wood turners.